Bees once again, remember subscribe. I'm delighted to be joined by the man himself, Big D, Mr. Dean White. How are you? I'm here, man. You know what I'm saying? Just cutting through, man. You know, in these these mad times, stuck at home, you know, and uh, trying not to fucking bounce my head on the wall, mate. Crunch. <laughs> you know what? I don't know what's worse, a big right hand from Dean White or homeschooling. Which one is worse at the moment? I just don't know. Oh, that is funny. It's crazy, man. So look, talk to me, man, about, you know, Black Box, the plans for this year. I mean, what have you got oh. kind of... Do you know, it up? It's, um, in terms of, obviously, Black Box, there's two sides to Black Box. Black Box is Black Box management, which is really, really doing well. Um, you know, the boys are flying at the minute. Got a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and and I li- really, that's just really picked up a lot of like, like the boys are doing really good this year. Probably, you know, a lot of them are breaking into real mainstream stuff, um, stuff like that. Um, so that's really, really good. And films and stuff, um, some movies, just sign up the contracts for that for them. So that's going really well. Boxing size, very, very slow. Obviously, as you know, a lot of the, 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 the big boys are putting on their main guys. Um, and uh, I've had a, a few strong words with certain promoters, you know what I mean? Because, you know, there seems to be somewhat of a little bit of a favouritism for certain boys and uh, stuff like that. But I get it. It's, it's always been the way anyway, really. Um, so, you know, I'm always going to have my boys back and, um, and back them. But, you know, it, it's been difficult at times. Some people are patient. Some people ain't. So boys have gone and boys are still here. I'm respecting uh appreciate the loyalty that guys are around and sticking around, you know what I mean? Because it's kind of difficult times for everyone in COVID. There are a select few people that are fighting, but as you know, majority uh the the boxes are basically on the sidelines, you know what I mean? Um, it's trying times for the world, man, all around the world, you know what I mean? But I'm hoping this year things will, will see some symbol of normality. I don't know how much that will be because obviously this uh thing what's going on, COVID these people have got their agenda and the whole thing set up, how it's going to set up. And uh, I'm sure we're going to be on lockdown for a few months longer and then there'll be the tier system. So crowds and stuff like that, going back to big time boxing is probably going to be a while yet. So I don't know, but I'm just hoping, um, God willing, that these boys will be um, out and getting out and doing what they do best, you know, wanting to show their skill and stuff like that. But I just say to them, look, um, you know, you've got to stay ready. I'm being offered fights, but obviously some of the fights ain't the right fights for people and stuff like that. Um, and I think sometimes we're being offered the fights so the boys are whipping boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? They want to whoop my boys, so i got to look after them. You know what I mean? So I'm like, hey, this ain't tantalising this fight, I'm afraid, guys. This is not what I'm looking for. But this is the fight I'm looking for. Do you want to do this? And they're like, uh, no, sorry about that one. <laughs> you know, like, the game is tick for tap by this, like, you know the the chessboard but listen man look god is good so i can't complain um things are working out irrespective i'm building um i'm growing and, I, and i'm learning on the job as always you know what i mean so i'm just cutting through man we're just we're just waiting our time man you know it will all come when the time is right nothing before it's time they say yeah you know what's crazy i was going through my photo gallery on my phone and um I saw pictures of Dreas nightclub, Las Vegas, a year ago. <laughs> oh man, yeah. brought a tear to my eye, man. When we was in the club, was, man. Yeah, that was that was just before all of this uh, charade has uh, taken place in the world. We really didn't know much about uh, COVID. Obviously, we we heard about it because obviously they, it was on the news with the scaremongering of Wuhan, China, and people collapsing and just dropping down dead. I haven't seen that anywhere else in the world, mind you. Just saying. 
Um, there's no fingers pointing at anyone, but I haven't seen that anyway. But we was in a great time and a place where we, we enjoyed ourselves. Remember the guy, that little um, billionaire guy I met? My pal, the, um, the little money man, he got us the limo, me, you, oh, Kelbro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can't remember. There was loads of boxes. There was loads of us in that limo. Remember that, that millionaire and guy? Jordan, was Jordan Thompson. All, yeah, everyone was in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All them man there. Them man there was... I don't know if David was there. There was a... There was, everyone was there. It was a good night. We had a limo. We had that big limo. All of us in there. And we went to um that club. But yeah, it was Vegas, man. Come on. That's what life's yeah. made of, you know. They're memories. You get me? They're memories. They're memories. I tell you. But, you know, hopefully... You know, there's going to be some positive times in 2021. We've got to keep positive. You know, we've got to keep no, absolutely, pushing. Absolutely. Stay positive. We, you know, we, 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 you have to have some um, form of positiveness. But in these kind of times, it is daunting sometimes when it's Groundhog Day every day for some people. <laughs> and it's going to be harder for some people to deal with being at home, locked away, not much fresh air, not much activity, not being able to see family. All of that is, you know, you know, uh, mental health issues that could bring on suicide issues, alcohol abuse, you know, obesity, many, many different factors. So, you know, it is, I'm not going to lie, we all have our ups and downs. I have them as well, just like anyone else. Um, um, but we're human. We're only human, you know what I mean? But, you know, trying to be positive minded and think that way, it is a good thing. <laughs> Even if sometimes it doesn't look like it and you're surrounded by bare negativity and doom. So <laughs> keep your heads up, guys. Keep positive. As your man here says, Pro Beats, we got to get it. We'll be back one day, someday, somehow, somewhere. <laughs> you, you know, you mentioned positivity and us being back. I mean, boxing's back mid-February, and we had the official announcement for March the 6th. Mm -hmm. Dylan White, Povetkin, I ain't spoke yes, to you about this. Your reaction? Uh, you know what? I think it was the time that, you know, Povetkin wanted. He's, he's managed to wrangled the dates he wanted he kind of said march april obviously dylan was ready from december then again he was ready end of january and now it's obviously march and you know it's a credit to it's credit to him listen no he's he's an older guy 40 41 that turn that kind of turnaround he were he weren't really interested in that you know what i'm saying uh especially to his to his body to turn around so quick and do that then he said he had covid Possibly, possibly had COVID. Uh, I'm not going to say that, but what I do know is, I've said it before, with, with COVID, um, you have, with, with COVID, um, you know, it, it, if you're fitter, healthier, uh, and a, 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 a professional athlete, some of these, you know, respiratory stuff tend to, you know, you recuperate quite quickly. Not all, not all. Every circumstance is different. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but what I do know is with COVID, it's a respiratory thing. It's about mucus, you know what I mean? On your body being alkaline. So certain athletes, their body are more alkaline because they're high performance athletes, you know what I mean? And training. They can catch COVID and some could be different and longer and, you know, I'm drawn out. But I just felt like it was a bit of a meal the way it was drawn out, I feel like someone of his caliber of an, of an athlete and high, you know, performance athlete and campaigning, you know, right at the top, top level. If you do catch COVID, I understand. Look, let's, let's change it all around. Look at Luke Campbell, for example. There you go. Luke Campbell had COVID and a few weeks out, he still went and took on Garcia, still put up a great performance, dropped him. And there, there wasn't really any concern about his lungs or his fitness because the Again, going back to what I was saying, respiratory things with COVID, it builds up mucus in your respiratory and what happens, it gets quite solid and stuck. That's why it messes with people's breathing. Not like a normal flu. When you get normal flu and you get mucus, it's phlegm, which you, you know, you, you, your heart, you, and you'll spit out. This one, you won't be able to do that. It kind of gets solid. And that's why they put you on, um, I think that respiratory machine, but that's not good either because that kind of expands your lung and damages organs also so it's just all but like i said i'm not no scientist but what i do know is for mucus a lot of hot water a lot of hot lemon water um maybe garlic ginger old school stuff you know old school remedies along with some western stuff you know what i mean but you know it's, it's always worked for me 
out the years taking and looking after myself, you know what I mean? But listen, everyone's different. I just felt like it was a bit of a meal and it was drawn out because look, there's someone like Luke Campbell, a lot obviously a bit younger, given that he's a bit younger. So maybe that is what it is. But I felt like when you're talking about Russia and you're talking about top athletes, these guys have got the best doctors, drugs in the world in terms of recovery. You know what I mean? I think one of them was hydrochloroquine, which is meant to be good to heal COVID in 10 days. So I think things like that, you know, he could have got and probably recovered. Um, but listen, listen, that, so some might call me a conspiracy theorist. Uh, <laughs> but hey, listen, it is what it is. I don't know. Listen, I'm just speculating. This is just me speculating here. But look, whatever it is, he's back. He's better. He's ready to go. It's been signed on the dotted line. And it's revenge time, you know. Um, so, you know, Dillian's rearing, obviously. I'm sure he's in the mindset that he say, you know, this is, you know, he wanted to obviously get back out and seek revenge a lot quicker. Let's see what kind of Povetkin's turned up. And we know he's a super, super dangerous guy. And at no time can you switch off or you'll be switched off. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, it's not a game. You know, like, like Dillian showed, he was beating him, busting him up, dropped him twice. And just that little error um, in judgment. And, you know, the rest is history. It's down in the history books. That's probably one of the best knockouts, you know. Uh, it was a peach of a shot. And um, we're not really saying, I wouldn't, like, like I said, it was a it was a well-placed shot, but when you look at the run of play, it was against the run of play. But look, the history books will say he got knocked the hell out, and that's what it is. Now he needs to go and seek redemption and try and, uh, you know, just get the W, whatever way he can. You know what I mean? Because at the end of it, sometimes you don't fight fire with fire. You know what I mean? Mm. So he's got to be smart, and I, I'm sure he... <laughs> no, no, he did. <laughs> he wants a knockout, bro. He wants to seek revenge. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah. he ain't gonna be like, bro. Yeah. I'm happy for this to go points, points because yeah. the history books is gonna say you got knocked out and then you went points. You know, like with AJ and Ruiz, people don't mm. like that. Do you know what I mean? The way he won, people are uh, keep talking about it. But what I'd say is, I feel like he's got to play it smart, and I think he's got to kind of drag Povetkin well, well into the later rounds. Because look, at five, he was just about to be pulled out. So I figure seven and eight, he'll be well up for, you know, like the taking. And there'll be, you know, especially that kind of beating he took. Like he took some real mean body shots, you know. I'm, I'm surprised he was still in there, but that's just experience, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, credit to him, man. Look, credit to both guys. They're in there. Look, even for Dillian, we need to give real, real credit because he took it on his chin. All... Uh, the internet trolls and the attacks he gets, obviously, um, he says a lot of stuff. So people, you know, respond and give him a bit of stick because, but well, he's taken that. He hasn't said nothing about it. He said, look, it was a great shot. He won. Listen, I'm not afraid to get knocked out or lose because I'll get back up, dust myself back off, you know what I'm saying, and get back in there and try it all again. You know what I mean? Um, so credit to him, man. You know what I mean? But it is, it is a precarious line where, you know, it's a thin line. You know what I mean? Because look, when you look back at David Price, you know, going back, I, I think I spoke about this before, Tony Thompson, the first fight and then the second fight, and that literally ruined him. You know what I mean? He was never the same after those fights, you know? Um, but listen, you know, he, he dares to be great, man. The history books are there to be written and rewritten. So let's see what happens March the 6th. So we've got all confidence that, you know, he's going to go in there and uh, make a statement and, uh, you know, get the W. You mentioned David Price. Now, do you see the similarities? David Price was on top in that fight. Do you remember? Before mm -hmm. that big left hook changed everything. So, mm -hmm. Povetkin's a man that soaks up the pressure and has these powers of recovery to come, come back and get the W. Very mm -hmm. interesting no, point. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's dangerous, man. He's, he's probably got one of the best resumes of knockouts that we've seen. Have you seen his highlight reel of knockouts? What the hell? He used to call him Russian Tyson. Me, I don't blame them. Listen, he is a monster. And he just looks there, Sasha. Sasha, I am <laughs> Sasha. Kovetkin. Brother, mad. He's on smoke. I see. What's interesting is that Dillian White's brought in Harold Knight into the camp. And I was very surprised when I saw that. Wow, how long did you know about that? These, these people got their, their little thing. Obviously, they keep everything under wraps until people, you know, need to know basis. I just, you know, 
we talk all the time, but you know what I mean? Right now, obviously they like to keep things under wraps. So, you know, I just let them do their thing and, you know, it just plays out how it needs to play out, man. Who needs to know will know. If you don't know, if you do know, then, you know, good luck to you, you know what I mean? Interesting because Harold Knight obviously worked a lot with Lennox Lewis. So when you talk mm. about good experience in the corner, um, good move, a lot of people would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, obviously, it's great experience that's in there. Like Lennox, listen, when any you know anyone who worked with Lennox to harness and ha harness those skills, it's only going to be invaluable experience and skill they're going to bring to the table. I remember like we was talking about Lennox a few years back, also, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting times, man. Let's see how it all develops, man. That's what you can say. You know what I mean? Because sometimes things don't gel with people or whatever, you know what I mean? So you got to literally kind of assess and see how it is over a duration. You know what I mean? Your mate, Deontay Wilder. <laughs> Mama um, said, my mate. <laughs> uh, basically, there's talk of him potentially fighting... Charles Martin. Charles Martin, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, that's if the arbitration, right, that case that he's got, that he's taken to... Uh, that he's pursuing legally uh -huh. doesn't force a fight with Fury. Do you know what? I was talking to someone about this yesterday. Um, who did I do? I did a few yesterday anyway. But anyway, Charles Martin. Um, that's not the same Charles Martin that turned up to fight Joshua. Trust me. I've seen these last few fights and they've been some humdingers. Have you seen? Did, did you see the, was, who did he fight? Gerald Washington when he was in Vegas. That was the yeah, last yeah, fight. Yeah, 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 I remember that one. Not that one. I'm not talking about that. He smoked my man, but... The one before that, I think it was either a draw or a loss. He had a hell of a fight with one kid. I think it was um Kana Kana Kanowski, is it Kanowski? Oh, Adam Kanaki, he lost. Adam Kanaki. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that fight was meant me, did you watch that fight? You need to go and watch mm -hmm. that fight. That fight, that fight was good. And uh, that was a different guy that faced Joshua. You know what I mean? And you know what? Remember, he's now at the Kronk Gym, the famous Kronk Gym. Mm. He's at the he's at the Kronk gym now. He's trained by Tyson Fury's trainer. The same camp. They're all in the the same gym and same kind of camp with Andy Lee and all them over there. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. So, would you say that is a good fight for Deontay Wilder coming back from that in fact oh. defeat? You know, to know. by just, Tyson I, Fury. You know, who knows? Because look, when you look at it, it obviously it's, it's styles make fights. It's a different fight. Why would you? He's Southpaw. Like, I'm just wondering what is it in line for? Is it just to say you fought another big kid, like what, six foot five kid going in there? I don't know. But really and truly, Tyson Fury, if he has a contract, should have should have respectfully honoured that contract and given him his opportunity like they're talking about because they're saying, look, we didn't need to take that fight with Tyson for we took it, you know, he was done now. He's going to like he done him a favour, but what he, what in reality is, he tried to catch the man when he was down and out and thought he was going to get a great win and get credibility and get credit for beating him on the way back. He thought, he, he thought he'd caught Tyson Fury slipping, but he never, he, he managed to, obviously, you know, that, 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 that history defining thing where he got the 10 count, was it 10, was it 9 or, you know, that he got up and then he came back and then he, and he got his ass whooped in the second fight. So, I don't know. He reckons he gave Tyson Fury this opportunity to come back into big time boxing and give him a mega payday. Probably true. It probably is true in terms of that because those paydays are probably what, you know, what's brought Tyson Fury back, especially of late. You know what I mean? But um, I, I, I'm sure no one wants to see that trilogy fight because they believe it's going to go one way. Um, in fact, I believe I, I had um, Tyson Fury win the first fight. So as far as I'm concerned, he's actually two and up. 2-0, oh, but going into that fight. But I'm sure the whole world is waiting for the AJ and Fury fight. You know what I mean? So no one is... And I don't want no one attacking me because <laughs> I want to see <laughs> this fight or that fight. I'm not saying any. You know what I mean? Just like anyone, obviously, a worldwide uh, unification fight in the UK, I, I can't record it. So I'm sure everyone around the world is, you know, chomping at the bits to want to see that fight. But respectfully, there needs to be honour in this game, man. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a lot of integrity and honour in the world these days. You know what I mean? This boxing game is a nasty business at the best of times. 
And if you've got a contract and people ain't honouring it, it is a tough and bitter pill to swallow. You know what I mean? So, it's just one of them. Because mm. I see uh, Wilder's manager, Shelley Finkel, was saying that, you know, it's going to arbitration because mediation ain't worked. So, mm -hmm. Fury has made it clear that, look, he's not fighting it. <laughs> Full stop. So, could he be uh, in a position where Fury has to vacate and then Joshua and Fury fight for three of the belts, major belts, instead of the fourth one? It's a, it's a possibility. Anything it's a possibility. Because, look, you've got the WBO pressuring them and Usyk either trying to price himself out too much, if we're to believe fast cars, Eddie Hearn. Um, They've given the go-ahead. It's, it's popped up today. They've given the go-ahead, oh. WBO. Conditional okay. go-ahead. Okay, so that, that that's that is, there's some news, but there was a lot of holdback on that side because he was there was allegedly he was asking for a lot of money to step aside, or and then he was stating that obviously they'd need to vacate that belt, or he'd you know try and talk to the the WBO. But look, you've come up with that information, so that's preliminary. That's a good that's a good little step in the right direction, um, you know. But um. Let's let's see let's see how it all kind of turns out, man. I'm hoping it might be made by was it March, end of February, March. So let's see. It's, um, listen, it's a big fight in the UK, but are we going to be at that place to be open or have fans back that it's going to benefit? I can't see them. I can't see them being able to get anywhere near capacity what they're talking about Wembley anytime in the near future. When? When? How? Where? What? I think there's talk of them doing the first one abroad and the okay. rematch will be in the UK. That's what they're potentially talking about. With all the vaccinated people, without with all their health passes. Right. Sad more, times. More confusion, more confusion. Look, there's just so many complications right now. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, God help us. That's all I can say. <laughs> Um, last but yeah, let's week. see. Yeah, sorry. That's it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, because a lot of talk, um, even for Dillian's fight, I, I, I read somewhere he hasn't even said. I've been speaking to him, but you know what? I don't even talk about too much about that. We just talk about other stuff mainly. But you know, what? I will ask him because I was, um, allegedly they're even talking about that being abroad. I've, I've read somewhere. Yes. So, mm. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Yeah, well, well, let's um. Let's have, a, let's have a butchers, man. Um, I'm going to get on him to him because I want to get him to do some things. It's probably a right now time to do it now because he's actually quite quiet. Uh, so it'll be a good time to catch him now, maybe. So let's see. And how would you reckon, I mean, if the WBO give their blessing, uh, potentially they might have Usyk versus Joe Joyce for an interim belt and the winner of the Joshua Fury fight fights Usyk or Joe Joyce. That's possible. That is definitely possible. Definitely, it's definitely possible. Hopefully, Joe Joyce tumped down his rust. <laughs> it's going to be a hard fight, but listen, man, cover the juggernaut. Let's get. Let's make this a, a English dominance. Let's just run the scene, man. It's definitely a hard fight, though. But he's got a, he's got a real good jab anyway, Joe Joyce, and he understands distance control. But yet again, we're talking about Usyk. So let's see, man. Hopefully, I wish him all the best if he does get that fight. Hopefully. You mentioned yeah. English fighters, just to kind of conclude, is there a problem that's underlining because on a few occasions of recent note, our fighters have gone abroad and they've lost to foreign opposition. Is there a problem that we can see that's happening at the moment with the calibre of fighters that we have? I wouldn't say that, but America in the lightweight division have a, have a, have a wealth of talent. You, you know, you've got Javante Davis, Haney, Shakur, Garcia, Tiafimo, Lopez, um, and then Lomachenko's in and around there. Um, Luke Campbell, definitely a talented um, guy. Obviously, he's a lot older than these guys. Um, and I, I, I don't know, he was doing okay, I guess, but I felt like the work rate, but yet again, I felt like because of the power and he was feeling that, he didn't really want to let too much combinations go to be caught in between the shots because sometimes I felt like he could have done three but then he'd only do two sometimes there's shots or he could have doubled up with certain shots and he didn't that's what I felt but just looking at it but it's easier looking from outside than when you're in there and that Garcia was letting some 
absolute dandy might go. And he was fast as hell. So you see that speed element. That will always kind of scare you into letting your hands go and make you think a lot more because he was, listen, he was electrifying. But you see, what, I, what I'd say is I felt like when he caught him with that overhand, I felt like he should have put a little bit more pressure. I felt like he should have tucked up and tried to go a little bit. Not like, um, not Dukes of Hazard, but I felt like he could have applied um, intelligent in pressure intelligent pressure where he let his hands go and tried to see if there was a chink because look that was a big knockdown and then all he does is went back and kept the distance instead of closing the distance and seeing if he could have closed out the show i promise you if you watch if devin haney was in that position or any of them american boys believe me they would have tried to close the show what what do you think javonte davis would have done in that do you think he would have stood back and tried to box Mm. Yeah, I mean, so, are, yeah, yeah. Well, you could say styles are styles, different. They, no, they, yeah. they are styles are different. Styles are different. But at the same time, listen, if you're a fighter and you've, you know, you made a chink um, in an armor of someone, you're going to test. You should really test. Um, but look, he was trying to play the long game. I get it. I'm, you know what I mean? I get it. He's a long boxer. He's trying to play the long game, thinking, you know what? Maybe we see it down the stretch. But when you're a young, brash, hungry, fast little lion. Brother, you, you know what? You, you can't take all that time in the world because that man is coming. And I tell you what, after that, he was like, listen, I took your best shot. I got up and I rallied back. See, after that, he just kept walking forward and was riding and rolling shots and just letting his hands go and was not playing around. He were playing around. He got busy. I got, I'm getting a lot of respect for him. I thought he was a little bit more of a, a Twitter not Twitter, was it TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> man, bear, bear talking. But, you know, I saw I saw some really good stuff. But what I would say is I do see a lot of flaws as well. There's a lot of openings. He leaves a lot of openings. But, you know, it's because he's so fast, He th I think he relies on speed and reaction. But, you know, timing is everything also. So, we, go to the, we go to the world weights as well again. You know, uh, Mir Khan, Kel Brook at the twilight of their careers and when you look at the mm -hmm. top at the moment again you know Errol Spence, Terence Crawford, Keith Furman, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter you know is there again we don't yeah, so have going, a young going guy coming through. That, I think America they've always had really really good quality fighters and I think they've always just been a little bit ahead of us in terms of the pedigree of some, you know, the, the guys just, you know, it swings and rounds about. Sometimes the English guys can beat them, sometimes they can't. You know, like Hatton had, had a little bit of a run here and there. Um, Khan was winning, like he beat Madonna, he beat Judah, Sab Judah, you know, like, and then after that, he started to lose. It's just Nick and Tuck, like um, Kel Brook, he went over there, he defeated Sean Porter, um, some other kids. And then in the end, it's come back around, and obviously that's years later, then he got mashed up by. Earl Spence, da, da, da. and it's just swings and roundabouts, you know what I'm trying to say, so I mean, at this minute at that same weight class I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you oh, oh, hold on a goddamn minute, wait a minute but that's not even the same weight class because, but he's not English, but he's from the United Kingdom um what's his name his name's Josh Taylor I think he's 140 though, Josh Taylor. They're 135 mm. then, boys, isn't it? Mm. No, 140, Josh Taylor. No, what, no, no, Josh Taylor's 140. I'm saying, what are them boys? Oh, 130, 135, below. Yeah, yeah, so they're looking below. So that's, uh, I was trying to cheat. I was trying to find us a saviour. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I was trying to find us a saviour to throw it in the pie because I don't want to discredit our guys. You get me? But yeah, Josh Taylor's been on small. He's, 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 um, we'll just throw it. I know he's obviously Scottish. Um, is this, yeah, he's Scottish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he's Scottish, Scottish, yeah. I'm yeah, only asking um, you because, uh, you know, I've had some stick from some American uh, reporters and they're talking about you guys ain't got no guys. You know, apart from heavyweight, no, not, you ain't got no I'm guys not, at I'm, the top of the I'm tree. I'm not going to lie. At that weight class, it's, oh, look, you've got Joe Cordina, who's a real, real solid talent. Um, he's at 130, though. Can he compete with the likes of those guys? I'm not sure. Only time will tell. 
But those guys are a special breed. I'm not going to lie. See those guys, they've been... Listen, this is... Going back, I've said it before. When we talk about... Um, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, all those boys are Olympians. Yeah? Uh, I'm not too sure about Tyson Fury. I can't remember. But he was still boxing since he was like five or six or something. Yeah? And then Dillian, obviously, he was boxing a lot older. And they're in that argument. Those boys, Javonta Davis, Haney, uh, Tiafoma, all those boys have been boxing from kids. So this is not like, you know, they've been boxing a long time. So they've grown well, well, good experience. And then in the gym in America, it's a whole different sparring. You've got that dog pound mentality. You've seen the sparring, what goes on in the American house. gym. Maybe yeah. with the gym. You get, yeah. you, you get really, you get a lot of gym rats. You've got guys who are better than a lot of these guys, but then what it is, is the discipline outside the ring that doesn't allow them to progress and do more. You know what I mean? Because you've got man who's sparring, bad boy sparring, who go and spar these world level guys and put work on them. But that will benefit them going into fights. You got what I mean? So I think with a lot of the English guys, I feel like the, the whole training setup and how they box is different. A lot of them don't do that down and uh, gritty sparring, that dog pound sparring that builds that little. It can it, it could have it could have adverse effects on you as well because you become like a, a, a you know a, you know you're taking miles off the clock all that hard sparring, I don't think it's any good. But I definitely think it helps. Because if you ain't getting the right sparring and you're going into certain fights, because some guys are gone in experience in the gym, you know what I mean? And building over years, because I think David Haney and them, that man has been sparring with top-level guys from young. You get what I'm trying to say? So they've garnered them experience. Imagine going in the ring, you've been sparring with Floyd, Javon Owen, Garcia and... Female Lopez, yeah, yeah, yeah. look at that wealth of experience and the people they're sparring against him. And then you come and butt some Englishman who's been sparring with John Smith, who just lives around the corner. You know, like <laughs> you know, they're mates. They've uh, they've known each other for years. It's not going to challenge you. That sparring is not going to. You know what I mean? You need to have sparring that challenges you. You need to go and spar with better people and kind of get your ass up, but hold your own to a degree and learn and grow. So you have know what camps I mean? abroad, I basically. Have yeah, camps abroad. That's I, I, listen, I say it's very, very important for fighters to pick up their cells and go to Europe, learn. Go to America, learn. A lot of the guys that do that tend to, ha you know, have a better career. If you look at the guys who travel and be around certain guys and do, you know what I mean? They pick up stuff on the road. Um, because you know there's different look, you got the American style, you got the German style, you got the English style. You know what I mean? Sometimes what's a, a, a culture shock to some people is when they go in the ring, you watch a man on TV, you watch a man fight, and you go, I can beat my man. And then when you go in the ring with him, you think, Whoa, that's garbage style. I thought it was garbage. He's actually efficient. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's robust, it's efficient, and he's more stronger than I thought. So I mean, you don't sometimes getting shocked in the ring. And if you don't have the experience and you ain't been on the road and dealt with certain adversities, either been knocked down, inspiring, getting up, having to hold and recover and do certain stuff, there's loads of things that affect you, you know what I mean, in the boxing game. So, I don't know. I feel like we are playing catch-up. I'm not going to lie, we are playing catch-up. Um, but, hey, what, what can we say, man? Look, at least, we, at least we're in the argument. We're in the, they're saying we've only got the heavyweights, but we're in the argument. And we do have very good talent. Um, but yeah, again, when you're talking about America, they do have talent, but they're important a lot of talent as well. You know what I mean? Because when you're talking about light heavyweight divisions, there's Eastern European man them that's running mm, that. The Kazakhstan man people. that's running that. Uh, and Russia man them, you know what I'm saying? So they're talking about certain weights. Even, even well, I suppose American, even at world weights, you're saying, there's a, there's, they, they got some animal killers at world weight in America, you know, them, the Mexican... Americans, you know them man there, you know that, what's the little Mexican killer's name? 16 fights, 16 knockouts, the little animal one. Oh, uh, the super welterweight, uh, Belenga. No, not oh, him, right. There's a, they got bear of them, there's another welterweight one, he's, um... My, my brain's gone, my brain's gone blank. They were talking about Furman fighting him, mate. Oh, uh, Ortiz, sorry, um... Virgil, uh, Virgil, Virgil, Virgil Ortiz. Ortiz. Virgil yeah, Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz, that's him, yeah. He's a he's an animal. He's cleaning the floor with these suckers. So I mean, we ain't got no killers like that. You get me? And forget even him. There's Gerald Ennis, who's another killer.
really and truly, I've always said to the boys, if you want to learn, jump on a plane, go, go New York and get busy. You might go in there, catch a pace, and you might even catch a few shots and get them, and you feel you'll build some confidence with yourself. But believe you, believe you me, go out there, spend a month, and keep going out and training and learning. When you come back to this 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 melting pot here in the UK, you you have some added metal. You know what I mean? It's quite important. Lossie, um, Lossi, um, Dean, I've got to ask you about Eddie Hearn saying that he's close to agreeing a fight for Billy Joe Saunders against Canelo. In May, oh. Cinco de Mayo. That's amazing. Big fight. I'm not going to lie, Canelo is looking unstoppable, you know. Uh, I don't want to bring that real nasty um, <laughs> foot to the table, but boy, he's looking. Whoo! Hey, that guy was not respecting our good, good Callum Smith the other day, you know. I like the Callum. I like Callum Smith. I like the Smith family. They're all good people, man, and people, but. He was not respecting our our our, 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 our Carl Smith, you know. He just walked him down and put the real beat down on that boy. It's real bad. And he and I'm not gonna lie, I rated Callum Smith as one of the top top boys out there to go and do some real things. You get me? But I don't know. Look, Styles made fight. Billy Joe's, you know, Billy Joe's had some stinkers. Billy Joe's had some really sensational good wins. He's got good movement, so obviously he's going to move and do his thing. He's quite fast, but hey, would I bet my house on him winning? Hell no. Hell no. But guess what? I will definitely be rooting for him to win because I want him to win. Eh? I'd, you know, if any of the English man is going to go and fight these people, I'm going to try and root for them to win this, but shit, that is a hard fight. He's going to get paid though, man. However it all goes, you know what I mean? Bless him, man. You know, credit to them, man. Mark Tibble, uh, my guy, you know, Mark Tibble. I'm going to give him a call. I like Mark. Mm. Um, Billy Joe has always said that he's got the Canelo Vinci code. He can break that code. You know, he's hey. said he's always been the guy that could beat Canelo. But we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see, man. Listen. Listen, you know, when, you know, uh, I know they didn't give Callum Smith the longest of time, if truth be told. Um, so... You know, I, I think that probably played a part. Um, Billy Joe Saunders is in shape. We fought recently. I can't remember. I don't even think I... I don't even think... No, I did watch that fight. It wasn't the most tantalising fight. It wasn't the greatest fight, obviously. But yet again, he was fighting Martin Murray. Um, he did put a beat down on him. But they, you know, they do say when you fight better calibre opponents, you perform better. So, that being said, um, you know, let's see what happens, man. I think it's interesting times. If those big fights can get made, then great. Obviously, Eddie Hearn's working with Canelo now, the zone and so on. So, you know, it's time for him to, you know, he's putting these things to, fit to together for both fighters. I'm sure Saunders wants it and Canelo wants it. Because look, Canelo's fighting end of February. Might was it Vildrum? And that's the, just uh, Vildrum, yeah. Abney yeah, that's just a, that's just. We saw what um, Eubank done to yeah. yeah done to him. Listen, that guy. That's just. That's a formality. That's going to be done in three rounds or something, man. Any of them body shots, body head, roll, uppercut, whatever that guy is doing, he's, he, do, he does that mad shot where he faints downstairs and does the mad. Listen, forget it, man. Forget it. Forget it. That's just, that's Kate Walk. Vildrum is going to go and take a real beating and just crumble in a heap. Right. Sorry to say that, man. You know, I mean, you've got to give credit to him still because he's a professional athlete and he's living and doing and, and living his dream and he's in a place where a lot of fighters would love to be. But still, I feel like Canelo and them, they are specialists at picking the right fights and getting the right fights at the right time, man. I'm sorry. I know people keep talking about Mayweather, pick this and pick that, but Canelo's been a... Je ne sais quoi. He's been brilliant at this. I'm, like, I promise you. He's picked the right fights and done it. You know, in a time Mayweather used to, when he was pretty boy, he was fighting a lot of the top boys and having a hell of a fight. And that's when he could bang until he damaged his hand. You know what I mean? Um, but I think I think Floyd taught him a lot. You know, that loss taught him a lot how uh, pay-per-view fighters perform and how they work. And, you know, he went on to take the mantle and he's done an amazing job, man, how he performs. You know what I mean? So, yeah, credit to that, man. Credit to that, man. Listen, I'm I'm a big fan of boxing, so I'm going to be tuned in. I'm going to be raring. Cinco de Mayo is a good time in America. Real partying vibe. I'd like to even be there. 
Mm. We'll see, man. I, I don't know, man. I ain't really trying to mess with these people and they're flying and they're, 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 they're crazy shit what they're about to start doing soon, but I don't want to yeah, me bother myself. But yeah, I'm looking forward to all these big fights, man. Let them let them forward, give the fans something to uh, look forward to. You know what I mean? Because all this lockdown, it's a bit doom and gloom. People can't go gym. Uh, spirits are low. So no, you know, next month the fights are back. That's going to be good. So, you know, people are going to be happy. So let's see what happens. All right. Mr. Dean White, thank you for your time, man. Thank you as always, man. Pick up yourselves and uh, take care in these trying times and we'll catch up again. Thank you, Ooh, yeah. man. Black Box, Pep Talk UK. Subscribe. Thank you.